Hey folks, Greg here, and today I have a very special treat for you D&D aficionados out there. We're going to be unboxing what seems to be like the whole line of Icons of the Realms D&D Spelljammer set. I have a pile of this stuff to go over and talk about, so a lot of boxes, a lot of pre-painted miniatures, they all look great. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So hey folks, we have a lot of stuff to unbox today. Uh, I'm gonna be doing close-up shots of all the products here. And in those close-up shots, you'll see a D6. This is a 16 millimeter standard D6. Just to give you a sense of scale, uh, looking up close, because sometimes so, some of these things are all over the place in terms of scale. So, some are ship scale, some are you know 25 millimeter scale. And even though I'm gonna be manhandling them with my hands, it's good to have a dice that people know the dimensions of to just get a sense of perspective. So this will all be in my close-up shots just to give you a sense of scale. Now, for those of you who don't know what Spelljammer is, like D&D has different realms. They have multiple realms and what changes with the realms, the way I've been taught in my like, decade of playing this, is just the, like, the theme and the aesthetic, right? So Forgotten Realms is the most popular one. It's what everyone usually plays. It's what I've played the majority of my life playing D&D. And Forgotten Realms is like a medieval fantasy type world right like think renaissance think medieval you know standard fantasy that kind of flair but then they also have like several other realms you can play in i call them realms but they're also known as campaign settings they have eberron uh, dragonlance i i, I want to call it ravnica but i know that's a magic thing but it could be ravnica uh, ravnica uh, dark sun these are different realms you can play in that have different aesthetics and their spell jammer one is one that's always been around, but they're doing like a big push, like a relaunch to for new players to experience it. And it's more of a sci-fi s type of realm. So you have like ships that fly around in space instead of like the ocean. There's multiple planets. You know, creatures are, are more alien in nature. It all depends on your DM and your group and what realm you like to explore best. Uh, like I said, I'm a big medieval renaissance guy, so I like Forgotten Realms. But if you're into sci-fi and this is, might be the realm for you to play in, so this is their new line of pre-painted miniatures from Icons of the Realms. There's a lot of stuff to go over today, so I'm going to take a look at each set and each model individually and just kind of look at it. I do love that they come pre-painted. It's a really interesting feature. But let's open these things up and get to it. I'm going to save the biggest stuff for last. So let's start with the smaller stuff. Let me get this cleared off. The magic of editing, it'll be cleared off. So the first set we're going to start with is the Threats from the Cosmos. Now these are ship scale miniatures. Now what does that mean? ship scale exactly what it says these are for not your miniatures these are for like going on ships like the dragons are not that small obviously they're much bigger uh these creatures would be much 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 bigger on 25 millimeter scale it's actually i think it's one to 600. one inch in ship scale space equals 50 feet in length so like that's how big these things are if they were to scale it's a smaller scale for you to easily run encounters in a, in a grid that's one by one so that's what this are we're going to start with threats from the cosmos so let me, oh man, I put my, I'm like stuck in a wall and I have to, I can't reach, I cannot reach the controls, Captain. So this is the threats from the cosmos. This comes with the ancient red dragon, the cosmic horror, the swarm of murder comets. That's something I don't want to run into. And the tyrant ship. These are all pre-painted too. Some people are fan of the pre-painted and some people are not. It takes years to master the craft of painting. I do it a lot. It takes forever. Oh, pretty sturdy. He's out. Okay, so we're going to start with the Cosmic Core. This is the Cosmic Core. Oh, wow. They Wait, did that come off? Uh-oh. All right, so the dragon broke. It's okay. It's nothing. It's nothing the little glue can fix. So I'm going to have to glue him on and we'll get close-ups of him later. So this is the Cosmic Core. I've seen this before in D&D in different forms. One of the ships, I think, from the, the Mind Flare in that game, in, in Baldur's Gate 3 or whatever one, the one new one that's coming out, it looks, it looks similar to this, like the reverse snail thing. The painting is actually pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna guess these are machine painted and then they do have a gloss. Some of them have a gloss coat and some of them don't. So the Cosmic Core looks good. I do like how they're not, how they're kind of flimsy. And when I say flimsy, I mean like they have more give to them. Uh, a lot of pewter models, metal models is what I used to paint. Even resin ones can be very fragile. If they fall off the table, they'll break or an arm will fall off or people who play D&D &D will, know, will know that. But <laughs> that's the Cosmic Core. You can see him on screen now with the D6 for scale. Here we have the Tyrant Ship. Now some of these have a gloss coat on them and some of them don't. This one does not. So it's very flat. It has a, little, it has a lot of texture, but not a lot of 
shading. Uh, like, and remember, you can always spray paint these with primer and paint them yourself if you don't like the way they're painted. It's always an alternative. It's a cool thing about the hobbies. You can kind of make it your own. It's very heavy, like surprisingly thick and heavy, this one, the Tyrant Ship. Like, I'm not familiar with Space Jammer. It's, I've never played in that world before. I'm supposed to have a campaign starting soon on it. I'll experience it for the first time soon. But this is the Tyrant Ship. It's a little bit bigger than the Cosmic Horror. It looks disgusting. Here we have the Swarm of Murder Comets. They are entirely brushed silver. Uh, they have a little bit more uh, shading to them, some black shading, give them some depth to the crevasses of their model there. Orange eyes, these things look terrifying. I don't, like I said, I don't know what they do. Spelljammer is something that's it's not brand new, but it's definitely they're making a push for. It looks really cool. I don't know how I feel about the clear bases. I've always preferred black, personally. Oh, and they also tell you what it is on the bottom. It says swarm of murder comments on the bottom of the base and what it is and ship scale one to 600 to make sure that, you know, you know how big these actually are in your imagination. And then we have, of course, an ancient red dragon. What would D&D be without dragons? Of course, this is standard indeed. It is called Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're not in a dungeon and there are no dragons, someone's doing it wrong. But like I said, these things are painted not terribly. Like for machine painted, ready to go out of the box. Pretty cool. Like they, like I said, they are. These are smaller in scale than your average tabletop game because they are ship scale. Like you are meant to be on the the ship, similar to the Enterprise, fighting these gigantic things that are short, just ginormous. That is the Red Dragon, the ancient Red Dragon. Excuse me. And so that was the Threats from the Cosmos set. Now these all come in different sets. Uh, you can also get them in boosters as well, blind boxes if you, if you like that kind of thing. But that was the Threat from the Com Cosmos set. So this is another pre-packaged uh, set of Spelljammer pre-painted miniatures called Asteroid Encounters. And this comes with, I'm gonna botch this, Aesthetic? Es aesthetic? Es like, I wanna say Aesthetic, but I don't think that's right. I can pronounce hammerhead, there's a megapede, a living ship, asteroids, which are awesome, and then a wasp. And again, these are ship scale, so they're one to 600. Uh, one thing I don't like about this stuff is they have these twisty ties. I don't like them for two reasons. One, they're really annoying to try to get out sometimes when they're twisted really tightly. Secondly, uh, they're cat death traps, and my cats love eating them and playing with them, so I gotta make sure I put them in the box and keep them there. Oh man, they have three of them in here. That's brutal. So I'm a little behind the scenes filming you guys. See, look, see, I found this and she found one of these on the floor. See, kitty death. They play with them. They eat them. Even if they're just sitting on the floor doing nothing. Behind the scenes, nut. Back into there you go. We're gonna start with the hammerhead ship. Oh, I love the translucent plastic on these things. I think it adds a lot of detail. Like I said, for pre-painted miniatures, don't look that bad. And if you're not a fan of the pre-painted miniatures, you can always use some painting tape, prime it, and paint it how you want to paint it. I, yeah, you definitely think I need to. Pri you, you definitely need to prime it. You might want to put some painting tape on the translucent plastic too. You don't want to cover that up. But it looks good. Like this is a cool little ship. If, if you haven't catch the the gag, it's a hammerhead shark, but it's an actual ship that you fly around and do stuff on. So. And I'm sure these are like really, like they're called icons of the realms for a reason. These are probably very famous ships in the lore and I'm not familiar with Spelljammer, but like, that's okay. Like you could still enjoy it for what it is, like a hammerhead looking ship. Ooh, the wasp. I don't, so this is a ship. So this is like a small, like pirate ship, like an X-Wing fighter, right? That's at least that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, it's definitely a ship, but it looks like an insect. Just like the hammerhead bug looks like a, uh, looks like the hammerhead shark looks like a shark. I like, again, I love the translucent colored plastic on here. I think it adds a lot of detail to the figure. And for the scale, again, I mean, the details painted, there's gold, silver, red in here, brown, yellow, gives it more, and actually it looks really nice. And as usual on the, on the bottom, it has the name and the scale. So you'll never get confused. I think this is, I don't know if this is a ship or a creature, but it is aesthetic. I'm gonna say aesthetic. It's got nice blue and, and grays. It, even on the inside, is that a different color blue? No, it's not. So the one thing I'd like to do to these is like maybe give them a good wash. A wash is like an ink that you can, paint over that seeps into the cre crevices of the model and gives it a little bit more depth. Would like to see some of that in their in their pre-painted stuff. If they could just, if they're taking notes with kids, a nice wash and then the seal over it would be, would add a ton of depth to all these figures, which they have it a little bit on the hammerhead. You can kind of see it like in between the, the tops here. It's like darker, 
like black. Right, we have a Megapede. Now again, this is like, this is ship scale, so it's smaller, so it's freaking huge. It's supposed to be gigantic, right? It's a Megapede. But I do love his little front face, his little derpy black eyes. Like he has like egg sacs sticking out of the back. He's climbing onto an asteroid. The asteroid actually has a lot of texture to it and is highlighted rather well. These little black spikes. Love insects, giant insects makes, giant in insects always make great enemies in D&D. So this is a living ship. So this is, it's just, it's quite literally a pirate ship with like sails for wings and it has a tree going out of it. So this is me, might be a good ship for a druid to, to be on because it's living, it's alive, it's a living wood. Like I said, these things have some give, which is nice. So like if they fall, if you have a cat or you're playing with your kids or young ones and they're maybe not the gentlest with their models and they knock it over the table, hits the hardwood floor or the carpet, they're not gonna break off uh, or they're not gonna break into a ton of different pieces. I do like the tree in the back that's growing out of the uh, captain's quarters or whatnot that's really that's really cool that's the living ship so now i have my one of my personal favorites i love when minis can be used for multiple games and multiple things like the more use you can get out of them and these are just asteroids these are just plain plain asteroids so these might be good for other games that you might play as well as DD. uh you could use these for like x-wing the, the miniature game, right? But like you can, like it's it's really useful. Like these look good too. Like they have texture to them. I love this random objects that you can use for multiple things uh, outside of just D and D. So these could be used for your Spelljammer campaigns, your D and D campaigns. I think there's a Star Trek, there's a Star Trek ship miniatures game. You can use them for that. There's a X Wing, Star Wars miniature game. You can use them for that. Like they just add it adds a sense of depth and like dimension to the table and gets people more immersed into the game. So I love when they make just random objects into miniatures. And again, these look pretty good. They have some brown shading on them, gray, lots of texture. They look like asteroids. They look great. Definitely, I think it's funny. These are my, my favorite things in this set, actually, the asteroids. <laughs> well guys, that was the Asteroid Encounters set. Uh, and that, so now we're gonna move on to the next one, put all these away, and we'll move on to the next one. So now this is Icon of the Realm Spell Jammers, Adventures in Space, Welcome to Wild Space is the name of this particular box set. And it comes with Bombard, Squid Ship, Shrike Ship, or sh Shrike Ship, or sh Shriek? No, that's, sh that's Shrike Ship. Ancient Gold Dragon, and the Space Galleon. Literally a pirate ship in space. So let's open this thing up and take a look at them. Oh, another casualty, another casualty. That's two that we've broken out of here. Oof. Yeah, that's two, that's broken. So what What broke? The uh, the bombard broke. But you know what, it's not terrible. I can glue this back in. It's very, that's very easily fixed. I'm just gonna take some glue. See, that thing, that thing popped up because it's fragile at the bottom. Just take some glue and, and put it right there and it should be fine. I'll make sure to fix this before I get the close-up shots of it. Okay, so this is the bombard. It is now fixed as you're looking at it on the screen with the 16 millimeter D6 for scale. And it looks great. It has a really freaking huge cannon or some kind of ram on the front of it. It's got a little bit of thing. I really, see this is the thing. Sometimes they're pre-painted miniatures. They're like hit and miss with uh, the paints. And this one looks good, uh, except for the fact that on the bow, there's some vines and a flower. I would like stuff like that. I would like to be already painted because that's gonna bug me. I like to have the, gives a little more depth to the miniature. And again, it says, it says, I love that it says the name on the bottom. So if you ever forget what it is, just pick it up and look at it. It's actually really useful. Like it's a lot more useful than I think people would realize. Bombard's just, just a space galleon, just a spaceship. <laughs> just a space pirate ship. Looks good, little windows are yellow. Next, we quite literally have a galleon, which is just a pirate ship, just a really big pirate ship. This is called, appropriately, the space galleon. <laughs> it looks good. I like how the, the sails aren't just white, like they have some dirt and grind to them. Gives a little bit more detail. You can see cannons, the little spikes in the, so you can see the cannon portholes and the little spikes on the side. It has a gold trim on it, brown. It has a lot of brown. I wish there was a little bit more shadowing in there. I talked about the ink earlier, but that's fine. It's literally a space galleon, space, space pirate ship. That's basically what it is. That's what this whole thing is. Pirates in space. Think Corsair from like the X-Men. I do like that one though. That's that's a cool ship. Now we're going on to this is the Shrike the Shrike ship. It's a it's a little it's almost like a like it's not a robo. Remember these things are ship scale, so it's bigger than a robo, but it's definitely smaller than the space galleon. It's a it's a little little ship, little ship. And if you ever forget what it is, again, names on the bottom. It's a small little ship. I like I said, the translucent plastic looks good. These are really cool looking. Oh, this is appropriately called. Can I get anyone to the squid ship? 
That's what it's called, the squid ship, because it looks like a squid. They have a hammerhead ship, they have a wasp ship, and they have, like, this is fun little creative stuff. I just get a kick out of. He looks great. It looks like a squid, but it is actually a ship. I'm sure there's, it's magical in properties and has some weird rules to it as well. And I'm sure it's also important to the realm of Spelljammer. Translucent flags at the top, which is cool. I like the eyes are like bolts, big bolts, screws on the side. I'm kind of cool. It's got long tentacles coming out. Can you go on this thing? I don't know. Are you able to like actually sit on the, the front of the bow of the ship with this or does it stop here? Uh, is that the bow or is that the bow? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Looks great. Cute. Like I said, I don't know how I feel about the clear. Like, let me know in the comments here. Do you do you D and D players out there prefer clear bases or black bases? I always prefer black bases. I don't know why. I think it's clear. It gets scratched up really easily, maybe. But I don't know. I always like black bases better. And then we have an ancient gold dragon. Okay, so I'm glad. So getting a closer look at this ancient gold dragon, which has beautiful wingspan, absolutely beautiful. His mouth is red, so there is a little bit of depth to him. Uh, stuff like, I would like to see like his nails be painted a different color, his eyes, his mouth, just to give it, break up the solid color of the, the shimmering gold. But that's something you can do if you want. Like, we, like he's like, you can be painted if you want. But he looks great. You see him next there to the 16 millimeter die for, for scale. Just make sure your party is high enough level for this encounter if you do it. So that was the Welcome to Wild Space set. So now we have the Wild Space Ambush set. So this includes the Night Spider ship, the Flying Fish ship, a Nultraoid, not, not Taloid, not Aloid. Hey, did I say that right? Not Aloid, I think I got it. And then another asteroid. So let's open this one up. This is the Flying Fish ship. Again, I'm noticing like a water, <laughs> a water ship theme here with creatures from the sea. And I like how his bow looks like the ship's bow. It looks like a fish mouth. That's really clever. This one has a lot. See, this is the thing about the pre-painted stuff. Some of the stuff is painted really well, and then some of the stuff is painted really average. And this is one of the ones that's painted well. It has a lot of different colors going on. They paint in between the fins of the ship at two different colors, no less. They do purple and gold. It brings it out more. The more colors, more variety, the more more pops. And the gold trim on the, on the boat looks good as well, and the ship body looks great. Uh, this is one of the better painted miniatures that I've seen and it's small again name on the back if you ever knew if you ever know what it is or what the scale size 1 to 600 these are small on the tabletop but they're real they're big in the world so just remember that I like that flying fish ship that's that's cool okay next we have a not a nautiloid or nautiloid here it's gonna it's got like Cthulian eggshell thing going on and I've seen these ships in, in Baldur's Gate before with the mind flare I've seen like something similar right it's, it looks actually very similar to this now this one is like more, this is probably one of the darker ships that I've seen before. There's there's some, it's a dark, dark, dark gray with some light grayish purple for the tentacles. And you can see in the tentacles, they have some like ink on there too. Like the, like I keep talking about the wash, the ink wash. So it's like it seeps into like the little lines, make it, gives it more depth. Just, I wish they would have dry brushed the the base more just to have it the raised, the raised edges look a little nicer, but it looks okay. There's some red, some accents of red in there to, to break it up, break up the grays a little bit. Asteroids! I, I said it before earlier when I opened the I love asteroids. Asteroids are fantastic. Uh, they multiple uses for multiple different games. You can use them in spell jammers, of course, and these ones don't look half bad. That 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 base on this one is really thick though. It's a really thick base. And they even come numbered. This is asteroid number three, which the other ones I'm gonna assume are one and two. These look great. I love things that just look like this. Just, I don't know, just standard stuff is, gotta get a kick out of, I don't know why. Maybe because it's more versatile. But that is the asteroid, the big the big asteroid. And now for the biggest thing they set is the Night Spider. Now this is a ship, I'm sure it's an iconic ship in the world. I love how they use the webs as sails. Uh, it does look like a spider. It has like its cabin, is its abdomen, and I don't know where you would sit in it. I guess this is where the crew sits and then you be up here. Cause I don't see like an outer platform for the crew to sit on. So it's interesting. I like, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous model, huge, huge in scale. One of the biggest ones in the set I've seen, we've seen so far on the showcase today. And again, translucent, the translucent plastic on the models, especially when they're different colors, I think is really cool. Cause that's something you can't really paint on. That's something that has to be molded in. So I really do like seeing that. It, and it is, it would be hard to prime and paint this over without getting the translucent. You have to be very careful with your painter's tape, but. This looks good. Well, folks, that was the Wild Space Ambush set from Icons of the Realm, some D&D from WizKid. So let's move on to the next one. So now we have Attack from Deep Space. This is another set. Like I said, we have a lot of stuff to cover here and look over the WizKid sent me a ton of stuff. So thank you again for this. Uh, I guess it will help in the Space Jammer campaign we're running in next week. So 
That'll be great. So these is, uh, this set is Attack from Deep Space, and it includes an Astral Dreadnought, a giant, giant gelatinous cube. See, so there is con cross contamination. Lamprey, the Lamprey, two different Lamprey ships. I wonder if that's a, that's a typo, because it says Lamprey, Lamprey. And a turtle ship. This, that's a turtle ship. They just, they ran out of creativity on that one. Just, what does it look like? It's a turtle, it's a ship. Cool. All right, turtle ship. So here we have two ships. Now, the box says they're both Lamprey. That might be a mistake. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. But one looks like a scorpion and one looks like a fish. A fish, yeah, it's definitely a fish. So this is a scorpion, and I don't know why it has legs when you float through space. Or maybe it's a, you know, actually, it's a ground transportation. That's what it is for on the planets. That's gotta be what it is. Cause I don't see like how it would sail in space. I don't see any like propulsion or jet systems to like have it wave or flap or move through space. So this is probably a ground ship for when you go on planet and you're walking around in the, in the lamprey. This is also the lamprey. Uh, <laughs> this may be like a, like a, I think what they are is like there's there's ground versions of the lamprey and space versions of the lamprey. That's what I'm going to assume. So this is the lifeboat of Spelljammers. Like when you need to go someplace or maybe when you're going down to the planet, you take this and then get into the other land. I don't know. But it looks good. Like the blue and the reds look nice. I like the contrast of like the beige kind of grayish interior of it. It's got silver on the front, like a clamp, almost like it's going to clamp onto something. I'm sure that's what it does. I like the orange eyes too. This one has a lot of color. And you can see how the color gets active. The, 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 and, and you can see how the color gives it more, more variety, which is nice. So it doesn't look so flat when it's all one color. And again, if you're, if you're skipping around, 16 millimeter dice is the scale on the screen. So you can kind of get a sense of how big it is. Turtle ship. It's a turtle. That's ship. It's a turtle ship. That's what it is. Uh, this one, see, this is one of the weird things. So this one is all one color or just about one color. It's all different shades of bronze. Like the top shell is like a darker bronze and its fins and head are a lighter bronze. And the only thing that's different color is its eyes. So it can look a little flat sometimes with these pre-painted stuff, but it is a smaller scale. So, I mean, that's, you take it, you know, take it how it is. This would be something that would be really easy to repaint. Just tape the thing there and paint it over if you wanted to, but it's already painted and done for the table if you don't want to. That's the great thing about the pre-painted stuff. So he looks a little flat, but you know, it's a turtle ship. On the top, you see like a little wheel to like unscrew, so that's how you get in and out of the ship. This is, so what I'm gonna guess is that these three are air, sea, and sky. So you take the turtle ship when you go down to a planet that's full of water, right? You take the lamprey ship to get to the planet, and then you take the, to get to the planet into water, and then you take the scorpion ship for rocky terrain on the planet. So these are like different exploration ships for the different terrain on different planets. That's what I'm gonna guess. Let me know if I'm right. <laughs> and then we have a giant, giant gelatinous cube. Not any gelatinous cube, but this is giant. Remember this scale is super, it's one to 600. So this is a huge gelatinous cube. Don't touch it. You will get sucked in, you will die, and you will get angry. So <laughs> this is the giant gelatinous cube. Yep, I mean, people know what gelatinous cubes are. They're, they're nasty, slow things. Uh, there's different versions of them. There's elemental versions of them, poison, ice, that kind of stuff. So it looks like a standard one. This is a giant one. There's nothing inside of it, which is probably a good call. Just have a giant cube floating through space. But you can, you, all, all, you can also use this on your tabletop scale if you want a gelatinous cube as well. It can work either way. This, can, this, is, this works in spell jammers, forgotten realms, wherever, with whomever. D&D's only limits to your imagination. Looks okay. I mean, it's a, it's a gelatinous cube. Okay, this is a huge big boy. So remember, this is one to 600 scale. So if this thing is is on your tail in Spelljammers, you're probably not gonna get away. <laughs> you're probably gonna have to try to run. Uh, you're not gonna be able to fight this thing. A magic missile is gonna be the size of a pin needle to this thing. This thing is absolutely huge when you consider the scale that it's supposed to be. You better be very high level if you're gonna fight this thing. It is huge. And like I said, so this stuff, this is one, this one is painted very well. He's got like intestines coming out of his mouth that are red. His entire body is a gray. There's lots of texture there. It's dry brushed, so his edges are like highlighted, uh, slightly lighter color gray. His eyes done very well blue with the white accent to kind of just give you that creepy dead eye. His teeth are, are beige and he looks, he's painted. He's painted exceptionally well, very well. The yeah, Astral Dreadnought. Don't roll for initiative if you have to fight this thing unless you're high enough level, run, just run. Huge, absolutely gigantic. One of the bigger, nicer models so far in the set that I've seen. So that was Attacks from Deep Space. Okay, we're getting to the end of the showcase here. We have only two more sets to unbox. This is uh, what's called the Astral Elf Patrol. Ship scale miniatures. These are all ship scale miniatures. So they're all one in 600, meant to be fought in space or on a big planetary scale. Oh, I like the coloring going on here. 
already. So the for first up we have the damselfly. These insect ship things look great. I do love the creativity in these, it looks great. Like again, translucent pink, pink plastic, metallic blue, and a mustard orange and silver really make this piece pop. It's like this is, this has a lot of color and the pink, the translucent really brings a lot of it out. Uh, on top of that, it being very metallic and uh, in color as well. Yeah, this thing is, looks really cool. <laughs> Remember these are one 600 scale. I do like the damselfly. So now we have an ancient lunar dragon. And I, I gotta give it to myself. So this, this is a good example of that ink wash I've been talking about. So he is like a light blue, like a grayish blue, like an astral gray. They've washed it very lightly with black. So you can kind of see in the crevat in the crevasses and the the indents of the model itself. You can see that black coming out. That's what an ink does. Uh, they went really light on this though. I he they did do his eyeballs, which is really impressive. They did white with a black spot, and that's one of the things I'm terrible at in painting. I've been painting for 20 years, and I'm still terrible at the dot of the eyeball. Can never get that right. They always a cross eyed. I wish there was more color to kind of diversify him a little bit more. He is very flat because he's all gray with the black wash. Like maybe his spikes could have been a slightly darker color or a lighter color, just something to bring him out more. So this is one of those examples where like these pre-painted stuff can look really good or just okay. Like none of these are painted poorly. They're just, it's a little flat. The, the Lunar Dragon's a little flat. Now we're moving to the Ancient Solar Dragon. Now if you can kind of see the difference here, like he, there's a lot of purple in him but it sheems and his spikes are a slightly different color. And that, that, that is a gorgeous color though, that, that sheen almost looks like, like rainbow, like how you see when you see gasoline in the water, or oil, like that's, looks, looks gorgeous. Like it just shimmers. A translucent bright pink really brings, brings out a lot in the, in the piece. And his, his gills in the front are green. His mouth, teeth, and eyes are all painted. So looking at the Lunar Dragon again, see how much more just having a little bit of color diversifies the palette a little bit more on the model. Like this one's painted a lot better than the Ancient Lunar Dragon. And it, it's probably because this is a more important piece in the world, I'm gonna guess, like a more key piece in Space Jammer lore. Like I said, I'm not really familiar with Space Jammer lore, but it's gotta be like dragons are a big thing. This is a unique, probably unique dragon to Space Jammers. And it just looks gorgeous. Even his fins on the front are, are painted sli slightly differently uh, than everything else. And he's got a huge long tail. Yeah, this this thing is beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. Lastly, keeping up with the insect theme is Star Moth, which is which is interesting because it 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 looks more like a beetle to me, but I guess there are some moths that have that long nose, but it looks more the beetle, the green, uh like is very reminiscent of beetles. I think of a uh, oh god, I can uh, Ab Abnook from Warcraft. The, the beetle monster thing. Uh, that's what I look at when I see this thing. It's got a nice abdomen, beautiful translucent, bright green wings, uh, and a lot of nice different color wood. The wood is brown. He's got like a, it's got like a dark blue on the bottom with some like thrusters, I guess, to keep it floating. Some gold trim, silver trim on the bow and sides. And this is, yeah, this is gorgeous. Like this, like I said, these are probably very key pieces to the lore and spell jammers. Uh, looks great. Like this, like this is one of the examples of how it's painted very well. Like it has a nice diverse color palette, looks great. You know, like I wouldn't want to repaint this, this looks fantastic. And like for the price point of these things, it's not that bad either. So that was the Astral Elf Patrol. God, it's a toss up. I really like the Star Moth because of the translucent wings and how big it is, but the Ancient Solar Dragon is painted so beautifully. It's really hard to pick a favorite here. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ones that I've unboxed so far, just in terms of the color and diversity of the box. So that's so the Spelljammers Adventures in Space Astral Elf Patrol. Now we have one more, and I saved the biggest for last, or one of the biggest for last. Like, this isn't all the Spelljammer sets, by the way. Like, they have blind boxes, they have more sets. This is just a, a very big showcase of sets. Oh, wait. No, I lied. I have two things left. So this is an Icon of the Realms Confidential Spell Gem or Venture in Space Set 24. So what these are, for people who aren't sure, this is something they'll, they'll send to like press or influencers or uh, other, other outlets that kind of give a good diversity of what things are. Now, unfortunately, there's no label to what's in here, so I don't know what's in here. I'm gonna have to open it up and find out. And I might recognize some stuff, I might not, so just bear with me, please. I'm a nerd, I like way too many things. It's hard, my brain would explode if I knew everything about everything. Like don't like, you know, the, the, the tortoise in Rick and Morty. Don't look into the tortoise now, I know everything. Oh, wow, okay, there's a lot of stuff in here. Wow, holy crap, a big diverse, wow, okay. 
so here's what the box looks like. I know it's kind of hard to see with the with the thing on, but they're all fall out if I take it out. So that's kind of what they look like there. Let's take this out of the box. Oh wow, there's wings. Okay, there's a lot of things on the table here. So first we have this, does it say what it is? Oh, hey, remember I kept saying how like useful it is to have the names printed on the bottom of these things? Well, they're printed on the bottom of these things. <laughs> so that's very, very helpful to someone like me who don't know who half these things are. I recognize the Solar Dragon, the Beholder, and the Giant. That That's it. I got, don't know what these other ones are called. So this is a squid, kind of a squid thing. His name is Flapjack. Again, I'm sure this is a character in Spelljammers that's very popular, or like kind of like uh, Trist and uh, the Jaguar, or uh, Drizzitz from uh, Forgotten Realms, like a, a, the very famous character in popular books and stuff like that in the lore. His little captain hat, he's squid eyes going all over the place. That's pretty funny. <laughs> he is so little. Uh, he looks great though. Next up we have Hastain. Is there an eye in there? There is. Hastain. Again, probably like I like the blue. Like these are actually for the scale. They're painted very well. There's even details on her face. Uh, looks really, really good, uh, especially for how tiny this thing is. Probably a very famous character in the lore as well. Again, if you're skipping around 16 millimeter dice on screen to give you scale. Now this is Princess Exdali. Oh, translucent plastic over the head. That's for something this small, that's actually really impressive to have translucent covering the head. Uh, really, really, really cool. A lot, a, lot of a lot of colors going on here. Silver, grays, reds, browns. A lot of diversity in her color palette. Then we have an astral elf. Uh, I don't know if this, I don't think this is a character. I think it's just like astral elf, pirate, generic pirate 12. You know, like people have the pirates or the ghouls or whatever you fight in D&D nowadays. Usually ghouls, zombies, necromancers. Like again, I like how the, uh, the plastic really, I think malleable is the word. Just, it really is soft doesn't break, doesn't snap off. Again, she has a lot of detail in her head, like the, the, the her riser on her head is painted gold and all her bands are painted brown as well. Adds a lot of depth to the figure. What the heck is this thing? A Neo G Master. I don't, I don't know. Neo G Master sounds like someone who plays Beyblade and is very good at it. But this is something else. It's a disgusting little creature, has spider legs, arms, like its intestines, it's a big furry abdomen, this thing looks nasty. And it says 16 out of 47. I don't know if that's a number. That's not scale, but 16 scale. No, I think that's just a uh, just a number for a collection for the set. So I don't know what that is, but it looks disgusting. Here we go. Now we're getting some oddball stuff. Warmrick Blastimov. Blastimov. He is a hippopotamus with a rifle that looks like he's in the 1930s or 20s. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Again, like even his badges are painted and like his silver belt buckles painted. Like some of these, like the, this one actually looks really good actually. It's like, it's a little bigger scale so I can see a little bit better with my bad eyes. But like his boots, it, he's got he's got a little bit of shading on his pants, his sword, his gun, like they all have little accents on them, which is nice. He's smoking a pipe because of course, why not? And he's a hippopotamus person. All right, this is a void, a void scaver. Again, he has like, uh, again, he, man, like sometimes, Sometimes it looks really flat. Like he has a nice, like they did a gloss coat and he is dry brushed a little bit, which like brings out some edges, but it's so, it's so light. It's hard to tell because of the gloss coat. So his teeth and his eyes are painted different colors. They're red and, and beige or bone, I guess you'd say. But the rest of his body is one flat, uh, one flat color. I can kind of see it a little bit here. You can kind of see it on the camera too in the close up. He, he is highlighted a little bit, but he looks a little flat, not terrible, but this thing is, looks nasty too. I don't want to fight these things. So this is Mercane, and I don't know, this is probably like another famous character in the Spelljammer lore. I have no idea who he is. He's painted nice, big guy, uh, big person, big humanoid alien thing. He's really tall, uh, like really, really tall. I mean, you can pair them to the other scale ones. Definitely alien, <laughs> alien in nature, like alien is space and stuff like that. I can't tell if he's holding, a, he's holding like a potion bottle or a pouch. This thing looks terrifying. Oh God, I'm not gonna be able to say this. Neth Thagul, Thagul. I don't know what this is. I don't want to fight it though. It looks dis absolutely disgusting. It's got teeth and it's got little feelers and it's got multiple eyes. It's got pustules coming out of its back. It's got multiple, it's got crab legs for some reason, which makes it even more terrifying because they have hooks on the end and pincers. This thing looks absolutely disgusting. Painted well again too. Yeah, it's got some shading on the back. His eyes are red with the, the pupil painted black. Teeth are white and really make them pop. Looks good there. And he's, he's got some fading on his crab legs going down to his claws, to his feet. 
That looks really good. And now we have what I thought was a character just says giant space hamster, because why not? Why not? That's the question, why, why not? People may ask why, I say why not? And he's actually painted very well. There's, I think, a dwarf companion. Could be a halfling, but dwarf companion in the front with like a, <laughs> with a leash and it's carrying all her stuff, like a pack horse, like a mule. <laughs> the thing is, is huge. It's painted really well, his hands are, are pink. And even the dwarf in the front, or it could be a halfling, excuse me, I think it's a halfling. Even the halfling in front is painted well, like her eyes especially, like wow, they actually did her eyes. It's really impressive. And her belts and stuff like that. She has a bow. Uh, an arrow, <laughs> all the boxes and bed wraps and crates that he's carrying on like a kind of like an Alice pack, like a like a sled dog's track. And he has a his harness is painted beautifully too, brown and gold. It goes all the way back around. Lots of detail on the space hamster, on the giant space hamster. Excuse me, Gaj. This is Gaj. G A W. Gaj. This is looks disgusting. He's like an insect alien thing. Looks like an armadillo or roly poly. Just disgusting. Insects make great, great enemies to fight in games. Oh, so he does have a little bit of dry brushing on his tail and on his shell, bringing out the raised edges as a light gray. Does look a little flat. Uh, his neck does have white, so does his antennae a little bit. His eyes are dotted with gray. A little, just a little bit more dry brushing, maybe a heavy more dry brushing would have brought out a lot more of this piece because there's a lot of texture on him. But he absolutely, he looks good. Disgusting, but he looks good. Ugh, bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Hey, I know what this is. This is a beholder. I don't know if this is a special type of beholder, but it, to me, it just looks like a, a normal beholder. I don't know if it's a space beholder or whatever. It just says beholder. Uh, those are all over D&D people. I mean, I know what those are. I think everyone, if people who don't play D&D, I think know, know who they are. He's got great texture. His eyes, his eye looks great. It even has the bloodshot veins and they did his pupil and his iris with the white in the back. It looks absolutely great. It's a lot of texture going on, a lot of colors that are blending into one another, lots of browns and reds. Uh, and then he, of course he has all his other eyes, which are all white with a dotted pupil. Like, I think they had to make sure they took their time with this one. He's, it's such an iconic creature in the D&D mythos of the Beholder. Now we have the Young Solar Dragon. As you can see, the scale, this is a different scale. These aren't ship scale. I, th oh, I think these are 25 tabletop scale. So this is slightly bigger than the one we saw before, which is this one. So this is the ship scale to give you uh, an idea of how the scaling works. And this is a young one, so it may be even smaller than the actual adult solar dragons. But again, like they took their time with this one. The, the color is beautiful. It's got that shimmering purple look. His wings are detachable, which makes him easier to store. And all the spikes on him are painted black. And he just, he's one of the, he's so far, my, I think my favorite model in the set, just because they really knew the importance of the solar dragon in the set and it shows in how they painted him. And he has a lot of different colors going on. He doesn't look flat at all. It, uh, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I keep calling him he, just, it, it, it's, it's a dragon. I don't know what its gender is or sex. Like the eye, the pupils are white. That's how I paint my pupils, just white. Absolutely gorgeous model. So now we have Bow Rogue or Bow Rog. I don't know if the H is silent, but it's Bow Rog. And he's just a four-armed giant. It reminds me of uh, Prince Goro in Mortal Kombat, right? Obviously inspired, maybe. Or maybe he was existed before that. Maybe it was vice versa. I never know with these things because D&D is a lot older than Mortal Kombat. So he's carrying a boulder, has a spear. He's got a nice green tip to him. He's got some of that black ink I was talking about. And his crevasses gives him a little more, a little more depth. He does have some very light dry brushing of like a slightly light, lighter color on most of his stuff. Huge in scale. I love his dynamic pose. His mouth and eyes look great. His eyes are actually dotted, which is insane. Like they're so beady. Like they're on par with the smaller ones and they're still dotted. That's so impressive. I would not be able to pull that off. His whole people would be black. Uh, the rope and his loincloth are also painted. This looks this looks great. The boulder's like a, like a dirty brown, brownish red. His spear is a little flimsy, but that's because you want it to be. If it was solid, one, it would be a pointing hazard. It might hurt somebody. And two, it'll snap off if he falls. And, but if you, this is not gonna break. This has a lot of give to it, as you can see here. A lot of give. And the last one in the set, I don't know what this thing is. It looks like a rhino. What is this? Back, Braxat. I'm gonna say Braxat, Braxit, Braxit maybe, Braxat. Another, probably a character I'm gonna guess. He looks gorgeous. Like, you, here's what I'm talking about with the, with the dry brushing, with the, the highlighting of like going over the brush and doing the highlights for the texture. It's really heavily done on him. Like you can see all the details sticking out, all the little postules, bumps on his armor. 
on the back and it's, it's done all over the place. Now it does look a little flat because it's done so heavily all over the place. There's nothing really to contrast it. It's just all the same color. His pupils are not only black, but they painted his pupils, his iris, and his eyeball, which is really small. If you can see it on the camera right now, it's real, those are really small details. It's really impressive. It actually brings a lot of life to the character. And then his teeth are also like a beige. So yeah, I, in, in this case, like I would have liked to see like maybe his toenails painted, his hooves and his fingernails painted a slightly solid color just to break up the dry brush uh, flat look on him, but he, he like this is like this is how you dry brush. Like this is heavily dry brushed or heavily highlighted. This is looks great. Yeah, he is it's a he's a big boy. That was a lot of miniatures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen miniatures in this like promotional box set. So thank you, Wizkids, for sending me that. There's there's a lot here. My favorite again, Solar Dragon. Obviously, it's the best painted and looks the best in my in my personal opinion definitely has some history there. That's why they're taking time with that model. So that was the promo set, but wait, we're not done yet. There's still one more thing we have to unbox and I saved the biggest one for last. So folks, this is an adult solar dragon with Prince Zelieth. I think the X makes a C. We were all doing ship scale before and then the, the promo box had some regular 25 millimeter minis, maybe, maybe a little bit smaller than 25 millimeter, but they were about normal size. This, and this thing is huge. And it's also super light, which is interesting. So where is the, on the side? This thing is the biggest one that I have in the whole set. I saved it for last. Oh no, it has twisty ties. No, not the twisty ties. Why? Why are the twisty ties? I do not like twisty ties. Oh wow. It is, wow. Okay. So it has removable wings. Oh, put those in there like that. Wings are like, I think those, that's just this energy, like it's the type of energy that it exudes. Oh, wow. Oh wait, does this come off? <laughs> that's cute. Okay, so this is the adult solar dragon. Now this scale is interesting. It's, I don't know, what, does it say the scale? It does not. I think this is 25 millimeter scale, uh, but like, so this is the, like this, this model's just so gorgeous. It's huge. Like the base is really big, but as you can see here, like there's different, this one is similar, if not a little bit bulkier, and that's supposed to be a young one. So the scale, gets a bit dis uh, disproportionate. Like, I don't know what scale this is. This is one to 600. So that's like the small one, right? Then this is supposed to be a young adult one. I don't know the scale of that one. And this is supposed to be an adult one. So this one sh is probably smaller scale than, you know, because it would be this big, probably. Something really huge. So I'm not sure to describe, but you can see here the three different sizes of the Solar Dragon. The young Solar Dragon, the one to 600 scale, and then this one. And it has the same glorious paint job as the other ones. Looks fantastic. Shimmers, the black on the spikes, the gold, the long, the long tail. Can the tail move? No, the tail's a separate piece. So that's interesting. Like it was glued on afterwards. The long, super stretched out tail. The beautiful wings that are detachable. And then it also comes with the prince, uh, Zelieth. And what's cool about this is he has a little bubble on his head, <laughs> which is kind of cool. His torso comes off his, his standard base and can go on to his rider base. And on top of this, there's a little thing that pops off. Grab it here. And he can put him right in there as he's riding the mount into battle. That's kind of cool. That's an interesting, like modulating uh, miniature system. Rather than have a completely new model, you can just input it there. I'm told with these wings staying on here. Hold on. Ah, yeah, that was really flimsy. So he comes with, with that, which is, which is really kind of cool. Gorgeous paint job on this. The Solar Dragon's probably my favorite out of all the ones I did today. Not, not particularly this model, just in general, the, the, the creature itself. It's just gorgeously painted and displayed. The modular writing of the, the prints on top of him is hilarious. That we can take him out and put him back in. He's on a huge base. Absolutely gigantic. And yeah, that's, that's the biggest one in the set I got. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this huge so showcase. I know we showed off a lot. It's probably gonna be a very long video. I'm gonna try to chop it up as, as quick as I can to get the point across. But if you enjoyed it, please hit that like, subscribe, notification button. It's three small clicks for you, but means the world to us. And these are available uh, online right now. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get them. Thank you, WizKids, for sending me these. These are fantastic. We're gonna use them in my Spelljammer campaign. Uh, I'll even take some pictures when we actually do use them. So thank you again so much for watching and for more unboxing and reviews. You're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com.